The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, make sure you guys hit that like button and definitely take the time to subscribe. The Ice Cream Man's here. Shout out to the Ice Cream Man. I might, I might, I might gotta get me some ice cream. But listen, December the 18th, say the day, Golden Boy Promotions is coming to you guys with the with probably the, yeah, the last card of the year, I believe in San Antonio, Texas. And I'll let you guys know, I will be in San Antonio, Texas. So if you're in the San Antonio, Texas area, or if you're gonna be at the fight, let me know in advance, because I would like to meet some of my viewers. I like me, I like meeting people who watch the channel. It's always fun to meet them and, and interact with them and congregate with people that watch True School Sports. And apparently, as I learned last night on my live, I have a lot of love in San Antonio, Texas. And who knew, I've, I've only been there one time. So it's, it's, good to, it's good to know that my videos are getting out there and people are appreciating the work. But um. Let's talk about it, man. Gilberto Ramirez, he's the main event. He's taking on Uniesi Gonzalez, and I like this fight a lot. You know, Gilberto Ramirez is a fighter that is trying to make a name for himself, trying to get those big fights. He's had 42 fights in his career. He's proven himself to be a quality fighter. He's been WBO champion at 168, but he hasn't been able to get those high-profile fights that would take him to the next level. And as it stands now, you know, he's ranked, you know, top five in three of the four sanctioning bodies. He's right in line for Joe Smith. He's right in line for Better BF. He's right in line for Bivol. So... He might be in line for one of those guys next. We'll see what happens with that. But right now, he's got Uniesi Gonzalez, and that's no cakewalk. That's no gimme. You know, we talk about Uniesi Gonzalez. I'm, I'm familiar with him. He's someone that trains in my area. He's a South Florida guy, Cuban, um, veteran, can punch. Uh, this is the same Uniesi Gonzalez. This is the same Uniesi Gonzalez that fought John Pascal all those years ago, and he gave John Pascal hell. A, a lot of people, myself included. Thought Uniesi Gonzalez defeated John Pascal, but the judges saw otherwise, and he was he was on the wrong end of, of a bad decision. Then he fought uh, right after that. He fought Slava Shabransky, who was a top prospect, a hyped up prospect at that time, 14 0. That was another close fight, lost by majority decision. And then he lost to Alexander Vazdik in three rounds and got stopped. So, but whether it's been by hook or whether it's been by crook, Uniesi Gonzalez has been a, a good competitive light heavyweight but he hasn't been able to quite get over the hump and he's 36 years old now you gotta be thinking that this is his last crack at glory his last crack to really push forward his career and i fully expect to get the best uniesi gonzalez possible because i'm gonna i believe he'll be a fighter that has a lot of desperation and sometimes the most dangerous fighter is a desperate fighter so it's gilberto has to really show his quality in this fight now on the gilberto side of things gilberto gilberto is a fighter that you know, in his last fight against Sullivan Barrera, he stopped him in four rounds. And, and Sullivan Barrera is, 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 is no bum. Sullivan Barrera is no slouch. Nobody's, very few fighters, if any, are going in there and doing that to Sullivan Barrera. So that was a, 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 a mild statement win for him. You know, even though Barrera is old and whatnot. I thought it was a good win, good win for Gilberto. Um, I like this fight because Gilberto is a guy that's shown in his career he, he can punch. Yes, he can punch. Um, they're both experienced. I mean, when we talk about, we talk about what Unieski brings to the table. Unieski is bringing, like, what? I think well, almost 30 fights to the table. Gilberto got about, what, 42? So that's, what, 70 combined fights between them. So these are two very experienced light heavyweights that can punch. And um, I think for the stage of their career that they're meeting at, I think it's a good fight. I think it's a good fight. So I expect fireworks. I expect uh, Gilberto to get pushed in, in pockets of the fight. But I think he's good enough, and he should be beating a 36-year-old Unies Gonzalez. But don't sleep on the old man. Don't sleep on that old man power because he's always dangerous. Now, uh, the Coleman event to me is the reason I'm going to this fight. I, I, I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with you guys. This is the real reason I'm going to this fight. You know, shout out to uh, Sinisa Estrada. She's definitely someone, uh, a, a friend of the program. You know, I love Sinisa Estrada. She's a great person. Um, Sinisa Estrada right now is a stand. She's one of the best pound for pound fighters in women's boxing. And there's no way around it. You know, right now at the time of me shooting this video on Ring Magazine, she's the number nine pound for pound women's fighter. They got her just above Savannah Marshall and they got her just below uh, Michaela Mayer at 7 and Cecilia Vegas at 8. So she's in good company. And I think 2021 has been a, a great statement year for her. She's finally become not just a world champion, but a multiple division world champion in consecutive fights. This fight won't be a fight where she's fighting for a world title because uh, she couldn't get any of the champions to agree to a fight. She's been very vocal about it on social media. Like Yesenia Gomez don't want no smoke. Jessica Bopp don't want no smoke. Um, a lot of these girls do not want to fight her. Um... And it's, it's, it's unfortunate, so she's just going to have to, you know, take this fight. It'll be a good fight for her to stay busy, stay match fit. She's fighting uh, Maria Santizio, who I had a look at. She's also just like Unies Gonzalez. She's also 36 years old, but she's not as tested as Unies Gonzalez. She's from Guatemala. If you look at her record, she just fought mostly 
fighters in um mexico and guatemala but you know she she did to her credit she did win a uh, wbc international female title against you know a couple fighters so she she's at least won a regional title so that, that gives her at least a little bit of legitimacy um on paper this looks like a straight blowout fight to be honest with you Tanisha should go in there and take care of her but you can never overlook any opponent so i'm expecting her to win but it'll be a third fight in 2022 i think she's looking for, for, forward to bigger and better things in uh 2022 than she did in 2021 uh, her last two fights have been world title fights against proven veteran experienced fighters like it's like like um Tenkai Tsunami and Annabelle Ortiz, uh, women who know their way around that boxing ring. So she's she's proven her medal. She's proven where she's at. And I think that, you know, Sinisa Estrada, if she can get those big fights against the champions like Yesenia Gomez and and, and Jessica Bopp and, and those other girls, you know, the champions, the, the, the champions, Marlene Esparza in the third fight. You know, I don't I don't think she's too far away from being a top five power for power fighter. And who knows, maybe she's even going to be the pound for pound fighter one day she might be a year or two away from that but i don't think she's too far away from being top five pound for pound because fight by fight she's showing her skills she's showing that she can box she's showing that she can slug she's showing that she can bang she's giving you entertainment value she's giving you everything you could possibly want in a woman's fighter you know she's got a great attitude towards life and towards boxing so you know definitely a supporter of Stisa Estrada. i might be you know not for nothing i, I might be one of her biggest supporters on youtube because i've been talking about her for so damn long but um really excited to see her back in the ring and um, you know, I'm I'm thinking that, that that her next title fight will probably be against Esparza. But she gotta take care of Maria Santizio first. She should do that. I think it'd be a good fight for her to to to, to get a highlight reel stoppage. Um, I know people criticized her when she fought um, Miranda Atkins because Miranda Atkins was a, a short term replacement. Hey, if Santizio ain't as good as that record indicates, if that record is as pat as as I think it is. She might not be too far off of getting that Miranda Atkins treatment, so we're going to see what happens. But she's the co-main event, and I'm very happy to see her in the ring again, and I'm very happy to uh, be there. You know, you know, you know, you know, I got love for this fighter when when um, I go on, was it Instagram? I think I'm on Instagram. Yeah, she put the promo code on her Instagram. I, I went ahead and bought the tickets. I used the, the, the promo code to buy the tickets. So shout out to Sinisa Estrada. I'll definitely be uh, getting some content with her when I go out there, and, 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 and you know, I'll be at the fight. Uh, so yeah, she's on the card as well as the co-main event. And then just to run down the rest of the card, um, you also got uh, Marlena Sparza, and she's she's back in the ring. And this and this lets me know that they're gonna set up a Marlena Sparza Sinisa Estrada three fight, uh, two uh, uh, Sinisa Estrada two fight a rematch very soon because Marlena Sparza is coming back to the ring and she's actually gonna fight Annabelle Ortiz, the same Annabelle Ortiz that Sinisa Estrada already went ahead and defeated for the world title. So this will be a good test for. Esparza, we'll see how good she still is. I know she won a world title, but or Annabelle Ortiz is no slouch. Sinisa Estrada made her look like a slouch, made her look like a nobody, but she's not a nobody. This is a, a, a fighter, Annabelle Ortiz, that had the belt for like, you know, she made about seven or eight title defenses before she lost to Sinisa. So, you know, if Mar Marlene can come through successful in that fight, then I'm looking at a rematch for their fight. And that'd be, in my opinion, one of the biggest fights you can make in women's boxing because. These two don't like each other, um, as, I've, as I've documented and as it's been documented on YouTube many times. Esparza don't like Sinisa, Sinisa don't like Marlena Esparza. So they got genuine disdain for each other, so that makes for a good fight. Um, but now, aside, aside from pride and bragging rights, that rematch could be you know, big because you know, it, a, a world title is on the line. And we know Sinisa's already been a world champion at minimum weight, she's been champion at light flyweight. Marlena Esparza is a champion at flyweight. So if Sinisa could, could beat Esparza, that would make her a three-division champion. If Esparza beats Sinisa, she avenges that loss, and that sets up a, a, maybe a trilogy fight, which would be good for women's boxing. So a, lot, a lot's at stake. You, know, you got that fight. You got um, Lamont Roach on the card. I mean, Lamont Roach, good fighter, was a highly tattered prospect at one particular point. He's taken out uh, Rene Alvarado in a 10-rounder for the NAB, NABA Super Featherweight title, so a regional title on the line. That should be a good fight. Um, who else on the card? There's a lot, lot, lot of fighters on this card, and I'm sure there'll be more um, that are announced. But overall, look, not the not the not the greatest card in the world, but not the worst card in the world either. I think I think there's some solid matches. I think there's some good storylines heading into some of these fights. I think uh, there's a lot to gain for Gilberto uh, moving forward. You know, he said that he wanted to break Floyd Mayweather's undefeated record. He ain't too far off. He's 43 and 0. So let's see how that goes. Um, Sinisa, it's, it's a chance for her to continue to show her skills and, and, and stake her claim as one of the best pound for pound uh, female fighters in the world. And then, um, yeah, you know, you got Lamar Roy trying to rebuild his career back up, and, and there's other fights as well that'll be announced. So, yeah, that's really it. 
Say the date, December the 18th, San Antonio, Texas at the AT&T Stadium. Home of the San Antonio Spurs. Your boy BT, Brennan, I'll be there. I don't know if I'm going to be there as a fan or if I'm going to be there as media yet because I bought my ticket. I haven't applied for my press pass yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. Hopefully, Golden Boy. I, I never applied for Golden Boy before, so we're going to see if Golden Boy treats me better than some of the other promotional companies. But, um, yeah, we'll do that. Um, and if we, don't, we don't, if we can't go as media, then I'll be there as a fan in the stands, having fun, vlogging, talking to the people, shaking hands, kissing babies, doing, doing what we do. Either way, you, you, you're going to get great content, and it's going to be a great week of boxing. So uh, you guys leave your comments down below. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.